It is no secret that most tech jobs offer high salaries, and considering the society we have today where we rely more and more on technology, these high paying tech jobs are only increasing. Now you might be wondering, isn't it just high paying because you need to be an expert programmer or just an expert in general? And yes and no. Just like any job, there will be challenging aspects, but knowing how to code is not always the case, even for the highest paying jobs in tech. And in this video, we'll talk about 10 high paying tech jobs without coding skills required. Starting out with number one, which is going to be the UI designer. Now the job of a UI designer is to create user friendly and visually appealing interfaces for web applications and websites and softwares. And being a UI designer means that you'll be focusing on visual design, colors, graphics, layouts, and typography of the output. And ultimately, you need to tick all the boxes of being a well-rounded graphic designer. And though this actually counts as a tech job, you're mainly designing and analyzing the point of view of visitors of the app or the website. And it's very important because after all, we all hate a non-responding, ugly piece of site when you're trying to use it or a software or something like that. And that's where you come in to fix this. Now, with a job like this, you're looking at an average annual salary of around 85 to 130,000 Per year and it is also considered as one of the most promising outlooks in all of the tech jobs with a 16 percent job opportunity increase by 2032 which is really huge now if we talk about the pros most people they love to make user interfaces and especially of course those who work in the field can find it really interesting and it's just a great experience overall but it can also be tough because you do have to keep up with a lot of new stuff and you have to make sure that everything works smoothly and i know that it's kind of cool to be creative but it's not all about creativity as well it's kind of balancing it to make sure that it actually makes sense as well and that it works now the next one on the list is going to be a software sales representative now this one is really on the edge of a tech job it just depends on how you classify it but it's a very interesting role and the job itself means that you'll be building relationships with clients and selling software solutions to meet their needs and if you're good at selling or you're good at pitching and you can memorize a lot of product details and you can understand the problems that other people have which are going to be your clients in this case that they're looking for a specific software solution then this could be a very good job for you but you can also learn all of these skills if you don't have them at the moment the salary for a software sales representative has a very wide range but you can make up to $155,000 per year of course depending on where you work and what you do and some companies or actually a lot of companies may offer you commissions which means that you'll make more money if you sell more and then you can also increase your pay significantly if you get good at it the growth rate for this tech job is 4% by 2028, which is pretty good because it's a very stable job and it's, you know, been there all the time. So, of course, it's not going to be like a 20% growth, but it's still pretty good. And this one is better for those who want to connect with customers. If you really hate talking to people, perhaps it's not the best option. Now, the next one is going to be a software product manager. And I've actually read up on this job quite a lot. And one thing that I find people often say is that they get to kind of collaborate between different teams and work with a lot of different people. And they find this to be very interesting. And as a software product manager, you will need to define product vision, strategy, and kind of have a roadmap based on market research and customer feedback. So you will kind of be looking at the future and also learn really how your audience works and what the actual software should include. There will be a lot of communication in this job because you're going to be working with a lot of different people, but that can also be a very interesting thing or it can be something that you don't want to do. It just depends on who you are. The average annual salary of this job is around 107,000 per year. And we're also looking at a pretty good job outlook of 10% by 2028, or it's actually very good. One of the challenges with this role is that it's not always super specific and you're always going to be working with a lot of different people. People, so you might have to manage a lot of different tasks and if you're not really a multitasker or you don't want to do that then perhaps it's not the best option number four is going to be the system administrator and this one is actually one of my favorites on this list and it's pretty unknown for some reason and computer systems and networks are your primary job as a system administrator and now before you kind of go against me and say that's a tech job that requires coding first of all no you're wrong and at least it's not a requirement when you get started yes there are going to be jobs that do require coding but kind of system administrators focus on managing computer systems and networks not necessarily coding sometimes they will use coding to do that but it just depends on where you're working they do handle tasks like configuring servers monitoring performance and troubleshooting issues and yes you might need some coding skills depending on where you work but it's not going to be any significant amount of coding such as for a software developer a systems administrator can make a lot of money as well and their annual salary can go up to around 90,000 per year or more of course if you're working at a top company or depending on your level of seniority 
but the outlook is only projected to grow at about 2% by 2032. It's still a pretty stable role and there are a lot of good opportunities. Now, as a system administrator, you'll be more the person that kind of keeps everything running, which is both good and bad, but it might also, you know, you might also be doing a lot of different problem solving and trying to fix stuff all the time. And it is a tech job where you need to solve issues fast as well. So definitely, if you like problem solving, this could be a job for you. Now, number five is going to be the business analyst. And if you hear the word business analyst, it doesn't sound overly technical and full of coding at all. And that's because it actually isn't. As a business analyst, you will analyze data and processes to identify business needs and recommend solutions to improve efficiency and productivity to the business to essentially help them make more money or just improve things overall. And you will need to collaborate with different people in the company. And you don't necessarily need to know how to code, but rather conduct user acceptance testing to kind of ensure that the solutions showcased by the other teams actually meets the business needs. And the annual salary of a business analyst is between 95 to 105,000. And the opportunity for this tech job is projected to grow at around 10% by 2032, which is very good. And that's definitely one of the pros here. But it can also be quite competitive depending on where you're starting from. So just keep that in mind as well. Now, number six is going to be the Scrum Master. And it has a pretty significant growth rate of 24% by the year 2026. So I wanted to include it, even though it's kind of on the edge as well. Now, Scrum Masters facilitate agile development processes, ensuring that team members follow Scrum principles and practices, which is basically a framework for working in a business, basically. They also track and report sprint progress and metrics such as velocity and burnout charts. And additionally, they facilitate daily stand-up meetings, sprint plannings, and kind of different meetings in general. So if you think you're ready for a more extensive and collaborative work experience, then maybe being a Scrum Master would be your thing. But again, you kind of have to be a meeting person in this one, and it's going to be a lot of managing and just making sure that everything works. And speaking about making sure that everything works the next one on the list is going to be the quality assurance tester or qa for short quality assurance testers create test plans execute cases and report bugs to developers for resolution and with this tech job you're actually doing a really important thing and you must take pride in ensuring that the software meets user expectations and functions flawlessly of course, you need to also report defects and work with developers until they are resolved. And although this job is usually going to include some basic coding, it's not a lot. And there's a high chance that you will learn a lot from the people that you collaborate with as well. And you don't have to be some kind of developer here again. Quality Assurance Tester makes an average around 90,000 a year and predicts a job growth of 25% in 2032. Of course, focusing on quality assurance more in software fields. Now, it is very satisfying to catch bugs and you're actually doing something really important, but it can also be quite repetitive if you don't like that kind of stuff because you are testing things and you must go through everything properly and you can also have some deadlines which can be stressful now number eight is going to be data analyst and i'm including this one kind of as a bonus because it is one of the most recommended high paying tech jobs for beginners but we also must keep in mind that it does require some basic coding skills now you don't have to be an expert and the actual coding that you have to know is pretty specific if you compare it to other roles and that's why i'm still including this one on the list because you can actually learn this one pretty simple it's pretty basic coding and it also has a very high annual salary and you can get started as a beginner but it's not going to be the easiest thing to get a job in of course it's pretty competitive but still the job outlook is pretty good and for a job outlook in general we're looking at around 25 percent by the year 2030. Number nine is going to be the technical writer. And this one is kind of a technical job, but you'll be a writer. And a writer is a job that requires you to research and understand complex technical concepts and products. And you'll also have to write clear and concise documentation, different manuals and guides. And some day-to-day -day tasks of a technical writer could be that you update some existing documents. You might just have to rewrite something and just make sure that everything works properly. And yes, you need a little bit of this and a little bit of that to become a technical writer, but you don't need code skills unless your job specifically requires so and the salaries can go up to 90,000 per year and has a job outlook of 6% growth by 2031 which is pretty good especially for a writing job and more so this tech job requires an intense kind of fine balance between keeping it simple and keeping it right it is not the easiest thing especially since writing usually sounds quite easy but you're going to be writing a lot of complex stuff and you need to be someone that's interested as well so if you are kind of in the tech field and you want to focus on writing then this could be a good option now, the last one on the list is going to be tech support. And tech support is actually really interesting. It has a lot of demand, and I think it's a great opportunity for most people, especially starting from zero. They provide technical assistance and support to users experiencing issues with software or hardware. And basically, it's a job where you will troubleshoot problems, offer solutions, and guide the users 
through the resolution process. And this tech job earns between 50 to 80,000 per year, depending on your experience and industry. And you can also make more later in your career. And many people actually use this one to climb to other roles as well in tech. It does have a career growth rate of 5% or 5% more jobs since 2022 and in the next 10 years. So that's actually pretty good as well. But this one is really focusing on the customer and support. So if you don't like dealing with people, then perhaps not the best option. And while it is satisfying to fix things, it can be a lot of work and you will have to make sure that you can actually solve the things and deal with customers. There's kind of two skills in one here. And while coding is a really valuable skill, there are many fantastic jobs in tech, even for those that prefer doing something else. And I also made a similar video, which you can check out on the screen and it got amazing feedback from you guys. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this every single week. I would love to have you in our community and thanks for watching.